Okay, um, I got an email uh, from someone who's kind of curious about <clears throat> the our system and why I um, use the the number nine in particular. Uh, that all from nine, the last from ten. It's a Vedic sutra. It has to do with Vedic mathematics. And um, <clears throat> anyway, I just wanted to cover some of the concepts and, and how it applies to Trampiliarnese. Um, the number nine is, is actually a pretty ancient number. It's, it's the number of, of man and of the of the universe. Um, I've always been uh, interested in sacred geometry, and um, I wasn't really good in math, but uh, I've always been in awe of the mystery, anyways, of, of mathematics. And um, and uh, the principles in Trampillar and Nice are, you know, trapping and, and baiting. Uh, changing plane a lot to confuse the opponent, and I found that these some of these principles, um, when used with uh, the Vedic um, sutras or the mathematics, uh, especially as it concerns number nine, actually works out. Um, it actually creates um, this sort of synergy within the the numbering system. Anyway, um, not how you fight, but just just how you kind of practice the. The, the different principles in, in Trampiliarnis and um, allows you to apply it and then later on you know you, you obviously you're not going to be thinking about it it's really hard to train it should be second nature but anyway um, the number nine uh, there's a saying in, in Vedic mathematics it's or, or uh, it's like a symbol of theirs it's called the circle of nine and um, basically it states that consciousness of uh, will be this consciousness of the point and the whole at the same time. I know it sounds really kind of wacky, but um, just picture a, a dot right in the middle, right here, right? You can't really see it in the camera, but it's a dot, okay? And this is number nine, right here. So think of that as our thrust, number nine, central. Uh, number nine is the uh, sort of the building block some people would say um, the building block of the universe really it's it's like a, the emanation point the access point um, where everything sort of manifests from okay when we talk about the circle of nine here as as it pertains to uh, Vedic mathematics um, if I was to think of this point in time Right, and want to manifest my re reality. In other words, uh, expand on it, Ex expand or uh, my my sphere or my reality. This would be nine, right? That's that circle right there. If I then expand it, this circle here becomes eighteen. Nine plus nine is eighteen. And then the digital root of of eighteen is eight plus one, which is goes back to nine, right? So there's this always this correlation, this consciousness of this point in time and the whole at the same time, right? If I then go go to, uh, I want to manifest or expand my reality again, I would, you know, there's a circle again. It becomes like a target, it's right here, and then it kind of expands out. So 18 plus 9, 27, right? Okay. Digital root, digital root of 7 plus 2 is 9. Going back to this point again. Okay. Um, if I want to expand it again, draw another circle. A messy one. 27 plus 9, right? 36. And so on and so on. 6 plus 3, digital root, 9. It always goes back to this, to this point. So, um, as it relates to uh, the numbering system in Trampiliarnis, right? If we were to think of. Uh, uh, I'm not a good drawer, but just do a stick man here, right? Okay. Number nine, right? Right here. We have what's called three stations in um, Trampillier and East. They, they have to do with ranges. I call them stations. They all two nine. All two nine. All from nine. Right? And then last from ten. 
this this has to do um, with ranges. Last from 10 being in the far range or long range. The all from nine is retreating into the middle range from the all to nine station, which is close range, all to nine. Right. So when we practice our baits or our fakes, uh, and we change, you know, uh, fake low go high, and vice versa, fake left go right, and, and vice versa. So this is nine. If I if I wanted to get to that point in time, number nine, uh, I would use um, certain uh, additions of, of numbers, right? So I can go five, a thrust here to the eyes, number five. Five plus what equals nine? Four, which is the other side, which is a strike to the other side of the head here. And then from there, that would be your fake, and then you go back to the point, right? And so on. I can go seven, which is abenicos to the midsection, seven, right? Uh, seven plus what equals nine? Two, which is the low point here. So there is this oscillation here, and oscillation here, going back and forth. So this would be two, and then you go back to the, the root, or the emanation point, or the axis point, which is nine. Now, here's where it gets wacky. Let's say you're in a fight or in a tournament. You're not thinking about, about this, obviously. Not, you're, gonna be, you're not going to be thinking about adding and subtracting and all that stuff in a fight. Let's say you did a, uh, unintentionally did a 7 plus 5, which is 12, which is over 9, right? So, so 7 plus 5, that equals 12 right here. So, but the thing is, you know, what is uh, 12 minus what gives you the 9 point? It would be 3, which is down here, 3. The digital root of 12, 2 plus 1, is 3. So there's, again, this oscillation here, high, low, right? If I was to unintentionally, I mean, I might do a 7 uh, plus 4, 11, right? Digital root of 11, 2, which is back down here. There's this oscillation, high, low. 11 minus 9, 2, bam, okay? So there is this, this play, this kind of... Uh, almost like a wave pattern happening, this oscillation, going high, low, left and right and vice versa. But the, this fixed constant of 9 is always there, it doesn't change. It's always there, right? I mean, I could even go, uh, if you want to go extreme, I can hit 10 right over the head, 10. Boom, 10 plus, let's say, uh, oh geez, I don't know, uh, 10 plus 4, 14, right? There's a root of 14, 4 plus 1, 5. There it is, that oscillation back to the other side again. Right. Now here's where it gets wacky. If I uh, um, hit 9, actually it's the first strike, 9. And let's say I go uh, 9, plus, let's say 10, 9, and then 10. Right. That's 19, right? No, Here, here's where it gets kind of... This is why they call it um, the consciousness of this point and the whole at the same time. This is the emanation point, number nine. If I go nine plus 10, that's 19. The digital root, digital root of, of, nine, of 19 is what, nine plus one? 10, so it keeps looping back in this particular strike. 10, 10, 10, right? 10, 19 minus nine, 10, it keeps going back. If I go nine, right, plus, uh, let's say four, that's 13, right? Nine plus four. Ooh, 13. 3 plus 1, digital root of 13. 4. So I'm, I'm doing this. This this 4, 4, 4. It's like a, a loop. It keeps going back. So n emanating from 9, it's what, it, it, it seems like it's like a spark. It's like creation. And it kickstarts things, right? 9, 9. It's kind of interesting, really. But it, um, I really like how it, it sort of illustrates the point of... of the importance of this sacred number is nine. It's ancient. It's the number of man. Now, if we talk about um, uh, our diamond, as we were saying before, our diamond here, right? Okay, we've got this diamond pattern here. The diamond is a symbol of perfection. You got a male triangle, female triangle right here. Okay. Now it was Nikola Tesla that said, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of 
energy, frequency, and vibration, right? So when we stand in the middle of our our diamond, right, we, we're thinking of this as an energetic field. Now it's up to you. This is where it gets creative because visually you can imagine this as, let's say, a, a delicate bubble, right? So what will your energy be like when you're defending a delicate bubble? It'll be more of a explosion and implosion. You're going out to the perimeter to protect it. So your energy will be a lot more yang or male, expanding or exploding to the point to protect, to make sure that your opponent doesn't burst your bubble, right? And, you're, and, um, and if, if we were to think about our energetic field as, <clears throat> let's say a hurricane, and you're, you're the eye of the storm, it's a hurricane, right? Anything that comes in, it's like you're inviting, you're letting your opponent now actually come into your, um, your, your territory here. Anything that comes in will be the energy in your mind and your techniques will be akin to uh, controlling by, you know, manipulation and you're, you're basically treating your opponent like a ragdoll. You know, controlling the elbow, seeking the elbow, controlling the neck, seeking the head, uh, and spitting them out, throwing them back out. So you're, it's more of a, you'll see a lot of head manipulation here, right? Breaking the foundation, throwing them out of your, of your diamond. You can think of it as a, as a castle, you know. You're just taking the strikes and absorbing the strikes, blocking it. And then all of a sudden, you know, the energetic field can change in an instant. You absorb the strikes, you think of a castle. It's taking on hits and all of a sudden, boom. In your head it changes to a delicate bubble and you expand. You explode to the point, to the perimeter to protect your uh, a bubble, making sure it doesn't pop. So, when we think, think in terms of uh, vibration and, and frequency, it can change how we perceive our, the energetic field to be. A delicate bubble, a castle, a hurricane, whatever. It's all intent. It's your will, right? We're not so much on techniques. You, you learn techniques, but don't don't be a collector of techniques. You know, it's not gonna it's not gonna work. Too many moves. Think in terms of energy, okay? And I take what Nikola Tesla said to heart. I mean, this guy was able to apply his uh, knowledge of energy and or, or or frequency and vibration to create free energy. And of course, at that time, you know. JP Morgan, he wasn't having that. How can you make money off of free energy? No, right? And it was also Nikola Tesla that, that said, if you only knew the magnific magnificence of the numbers three, six, and nine, you would have a key to the universe. Right? There's that nine again, it keeps popping up, right? I look at nine as the Godhead, right? You know, there's and then there's six or three or and here these are like polar opposites right they they make up the triangle um, you can think of like if you were to uh, imagine a circle surrounding this diamond right this is 360 at the top right 90 here two uh, 180 here uh, 270 here all these angles multiples of nine the digital root of all these numbers, 6 plus 3, 9, 9, 1 plus 8, 9, 7 plus 2, 9. 9 is a very, very important number. And um, as it applies to our art, it makes you, the illustration of it, it makes you practice the art um, more effectively. You know, you're, you're thinking of these things, not so much techniques. Techniques are important, yeah. But we, when we think in terms of energy, it becomes a whole new ballgame, okay? Like Einstein said, uh, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be uh, transformed, okay? So when we apply that to our concept of being surrounded in this uh, the shell here, this diamond, whatever energy your opponent is giving you um, will determine or will influence the energy that you give back right and that's why uh, uh, we don't really you know you cannot be a collector of techniques I mean you you, you have to take what's given to you and adjust Com combats ever change every single split second combat changes 
Right. So we're working on reaction and instinct, and uh, this is important in in Trampiliarnese. This is what distinguishes us from from other arts. Okay. Um, I'll get more into into this uh, as it applies to actual uh, drills that we're, that we're doing. Um, I mean, you can use some of the concepts of uh, all from nine, last from ten, uh, at all the different stations. You know, close range, medium, long range. Okay. Um, but as it pertains to that that email that I got, you know, the question about why we're using nine. Uh, it's important. It's important to get back to the na to natural uh, our source. You know, um, the natural frequency and vibration, harmonic uh, uh, frequency of the Earth is four thirty two hertz. Digital root four plus three seven plus two nine. It's 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 the natural rhythm of Earth and the cosmos nine, right? And it makes you wonder. I mean, they 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 decided to make 440 hertz the standard pitch uh, during World War II under Go Goebbels, the Nazi under the Nazi regime, and then it was uh, fully endorsed by the ISO in 1955. Why? What are they trying to do? Go on YouTube and and look at 432 hertz of any song that you want. I was listening to uh, Evanescence, My Immortal. Listen to it in 432 hertz. It's it's it's. Uh, some people might not tell the difference. It's not really about hearing it, that frequency. It's actually about feeling it inside. I mean, it hits you deep, deep, to the core, right? That that frequency. That's why it's called the spiritual frequency, number nine. It's the number of well, the frequency of uh, Earth, right? Um, so that's just a sort of a primer and um, you know I just wanted to get it out there so that uh, you know, there was no confusion about this number nine business you know it's not something that I learned from the Philippines or it's nothing nothing native to the Philippines this is something much more ancient you know Pythagorean theorem sacred geometry all that business you know that's a part of us that's nature Fibonacci sequence you know all that stuff it applies it can apply to our art you just have to to see where it fits in all right thanks a lot